The fall of Tenochtitlan on August 13, 1521, marked a pivotal moment in the downfall of the powerful Aztec Empire that had long dominated Mesoamerica. Led by the Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés, the invading force possessed advanced weaponry and tactics. Tragically, they also brought devastating new diseases that wreaked havoc among the native population. The Aztecs, while once conquerors themselves, found many subjugated cities eager to unite against their rule, ultimately supporting the Spanish conquest. Tenochtitlan, the heart of Aztec political and religious life, offered fierce resistance. The Spanish victory resulted in the looting and destruction of this once great city, the largest in the Americas. Despite this, Tenochtitlan was later rebuilt and evolved into modern-day Mexico City. During the 15th century, a number of smaller empires emerged in the Valley of Mexico. Two prominent city-states, Texcoco and Oscopotzalco, engaged in the Tepanec War in 1428. The alliance of Texcoco, Tenochtitlan, capital of the Mexica, and other smaller cities defeated Oscopotzalco. This triumph led to the establishment of the Triple Alliance, forming a powerful empire. Over time, Tenochtitlan asserted its dominance within this alliance, becoming the capital of the Aztec Empire. This empire covered an expansive area of 135,000 square kilometers and governed around 11 million people. The Aztec Empire relied heavily on coercion and tribute from subjugated regions, resulting in animosity towards Aztec rule. The empire was also vulnerable to external pressures, as seen in the constant border probing by groups like the Tarascans and Tlaxcalans. These vulnerabilities played a role in the eventual downfall of the Aztecs when the Spanish conquistadors arrived on Mexican shores. In 1518, Hernán Cortés was sent by Diego Velázquez de Cuellar, the governor of Cuba, to explore the Mexican coast with 500 men and 11 ships. Their technological superiority and alliances with potential native allies allowed for swift Spanish victories. The capture of Malintzin, who could translate between Nahuatl and Spanish, facilitated communication. Cortés established a base at Veracruz and, in 1519, marched towards Tenochtitlan. The city, situated on Lake Texcoco, was the largest pre-Columbian city in the Americas with a population of over 200,000. Cortés entered the city peacefully but later took the Aztec ruler, Motecuzoma, hostage. Diplomacy broke down when Cortés left to confront a rival Spanish expedition. Pedro de Alvarado, left in charge in Tenochtitlan, mishandled a religious ceremony and incited an uprising. Cortés returned to quell the rebellion and re-entered the city on June 24, 1520. After Hernán Cortés released Motecuzoma from imprisonment, Kidlahuac took charge as the new leader of the Aztecs. Organizing a determined resistance, Kidlahuac waged total war against the conquistadors. However, the Spanish became trapped in the royal palace of Axayacatl, subjected to attacks from the towering temple mayor. The subsequent battle, involving Cortés taking control of the temple of Yopico and setting it ablaze, led to a violent retreat on June 30, 1520 a night known as the Noche Triste or Sad Night. The Spanish suffered heavy casualties during their escape through temporary wooden bridges across the city's canals. While they eventually secured safety, Cortés lost half his men, valuable horses, and all the amassed loot. Cortés then faced a significant battle near Otumba on July 7, followed by further campaigns and reinforcements. Ten months later, the Spanish returned to Tenochtitlan seeking revenge and aiming to dismantle the empire that had antagonized many in Mesoamerica. They seized Texcoco on December 31, 1520, which served as a vital base for Cortés. As the Aztec grip on the region weakened, other cities fell under Spanish control. In April 1521, Cortés initiated a siege on Tenochtitlan with a force of 700 infantry. 118 crossbowmen and harquebusiers, 86 horses, and 18 field guns. The Spaniards were divided into four divisions, equipped with swords, halberds, and crossbows. Indigenous Cubans, African slaves, and attack dogs, as well as native allies including the Tlaxcalans, supported them. The Aztecs, although numerically superior, were disadvantaged due to their obsidian weapons. Moreover, their traditional strategies were countered by the Spanish tactics of targeting leaders to induce panic and disrupting the enemy's ranks. The Aztecs, however, adapted to the new challenges of European warfare, 
avoiding open ground and utilizing captured Spanish steel blades as weapons. Cortes launched a fleet of 13 specially built warships on Lake Texcoco on April 28, 1521. These ships, created from the wreckage of Cortes' earlier ships, blocked the causeways linking the city to Lake Texcoco. Each ship carried men armed with crossbows and harquebuses, while indigenous allies from Texcoco manned canoes that escorted the fleet. From May 22, three columns of Spanish forces approached Tenochtitlan, one from each direction, leaving the north side open. Aiming to isolate the defenders, Alvarado destroyed the Chapultepec aqueduct on May 26, cutting off their fresh water supply. On June 1, the Spanish warships attacked, neutralizing Aztec canoes. As more indigenous allies joined, the assault intensified, leading to the gradual collapse of the city's defenses. Throughout June, Spanish forces advanced, though they faced difficulties in capturing the ceremonial core of the city. Alvarado and Cortes both led unsuccessful assaults, facing fierce resistance. Despite a month of fierce fighting, the Spanish managed to gradually push the defenders back. Following the tragic events of June 30, around 50 captured Spaniards were brutally sacrificed atop the Great Pyramid of Chalotololco as an offering to the Aztec deities. The sounds of drums, conch shells, and agonizing cries echoed through the air, reaching the ears of Cortes and his men, who could do nothing to prevent the gruesome spectacle. The Aztecs, bolstered by their victory, initiated attacks on the Spanish camps. Additionally, Cortes' indigenous allies began to abandon the conquistadors due to their own cities being targeted by Aztec forces. The Aztec propaganda, including the display of dismembered Spanish remains, eroded the image of invincibility that the Spaniards had enjoyed. Conquistadors were sent to assist Cuernavaca and Sandoval, both of which were successfully relieved, reaffirming the Spanish military prowess. Despite the Aztecs' remaining strategies such as building barricades and modifying the urban environment, the siege took its toll. Starvation, lack of clean water, and constant attacks led to defections and surrenders among the defenders. Cortés received a significant reinforcement when Juan Ponce de Leon's expedition returned from exploring Florida and landed at Veracruz. The Spanish advance continued, capturing various parts of Tenochtitlan. By July 25, they controlled the entire city except for a small pocket of resistance. Using gunpowder, the Spanish systematically demolished structures to create firing lines for their cannons and maneuvering space for cavalry. On August 13, after 93 days of relentless resistance, the Aztec leader Cuauhtémoc surrendered. Tenochtitlan was devastated, looted, monuments destroyed, and its people subjected to brutality. The Tlaxcalans, driven by vengeance, committed gruesome atrocities against the remaining population, shocking even battle-hardened Spanish soldiers. The Spaniards seized anything of value, driven by their quest for gold. From the ashes of this tragedy, the new capital of New Spain emerged. Cortés became its first governor in May 1523. Although Tenochtitlan had fallen, Spanish campaigns continued across the crumbling Aztec Empire until 1525. The Mesoamerican way of life was suppressed, and conquerors took over the land. With the draining of the Great Lake, Tenochtitlan gradually transformed into Mexico City, the capital of the Viceroy of New Spain.